May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the 31st of October, day on which three particular recurrences occur, which are scarcely remembered and spoken about. The first one. Traditionally, today, the Vigil of All Saints was celebrated. In the Roman Rite, the term Vigilia, or Vigil, means a penitential day of preparation for one of the more important feasts of the year. The Mass of a Vigil was celebrated afternoon as the Masses of the Ferias of Lent and in violet vestments. The Mass would have neither the glory nor the creed, the Alleluia is omitted before the Gospel. This vigil was the incipit of the so-called All Hallowtide, which lasted for one week, including the octave of All Saints. During this liturgical time, the faithful were invited to reflect on the glory of the saints in heaven, whom they should imitate, the suffering of the holy souls in purgatory, whom they should succor with prayers and indulgences. The liturgy of this vigil in its prayers and readings shows the way to holiness, the ultimate reward of the saints are brought into light. As often in the traditional liturgy, the ratio of the daily prayer succeeds in expressing what it is all about concisely in one short sentence saying, Lord our God, let your grace descend upon us in an ever richer fullness and let us through a holy life follow into eternal joy those whose glorious feast we celebrate the preliminary celebration. Unfortunately, this more than thousand years old vigil, together with the octave of the feast, has been abolished in the 1950s. The second recurrence which occurs today, and which is a sad one, is related to the Protestant Revolution. On the 31st of October, 1570, Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses on, against the Catholic faith on the door of the All Saints Church in Wittenberg. On the 31st October as well, he wrote to the Archbishop of Mainz and Magdeburg, protesting against the indulgences. This day is generally considered as the beginning of the Protestant Revolution and is celebrated as a feast day by many Protestant communities. Also many Anglican or Episcopal churches hold Reformation Day services in observance of the Holy Day. In some countries, it is even a public civic holiday. This fact should be for us an occasion for prayer and reparation. Prayer for the poor Protestants, so that they may be converted, join the Catholic Church, and quench their thirst at the fountains of the sacraments and the other spiritual treasures of the Church. Reparation for the scandal of the separation of entire peoples from the Church. The third recurrence of today is more known in English-speaking countries in Europe and Northern America. We are speaking about Halloween. This celebration has its origin in pagan Ireland. The Celts celebrate the harvest festival each fall According to the Celtic calendar, October the, the 31st was the final day of the year. The celebration on October the 31st was a way to say farewell to the old year, close the harvest season, and get ready for the winter. The pagan Druids practiced many superstitious customs depending on their beliefs. According to Celtic tradition, on the eve of the feast, 
the doorways between the world of the living and the world of the dead would be open. As a result, the spirit of the people who would have died during the previous year could cross over to the underworld. The Celts believed the dead could appear and communicate with the living during this period. To help the dead on their journey, Celts lit bonfires and sacrificed crops and animals. They also feared that if these souls were able to recognize them, that they would drag them down into the afterlife with them. The townspeople, therefore, wore costumes so as not to be recognizable in order to prevent recognition by a soul people would wear masks and costumes to disguise their identities. It is easy to see how this costume of wearing costumes, for example of demons, witches and so on on Halloween, has never had anything to do with Christianity. This practice was called mumming, and people often gave mamas food and drink. This custom echoed the Celtic practice of making sacrifices at their feast day. It was believed that such offerings would help satisfy the spirits so they would go away without making trouble. Today, this tradition is known as trick-or-treating. Adults give candy to children who, if they get a treat, will hopefully move along without performing any malicious trick. Jack o' lanterns are a newer Halloween tradition, which did not originate with the Celtic festival, but are also of superstitious origin. They derive from an Irish legend about a man named, allegedly, Stingy Jack. This person would have been cruel and liked to, pray, to play mischievous tricks on his friends. When Jack died, his spirit would have been forced to roam in the darkness as punishment for the unpleasant personality. To light his way, he would have carved a hollow in a turnip and placed a candle inside. Because of this, the Irish referred to him as Jack of the Lantern, and later contracted Jack o' Lantern. People in Ireland and England used to put candles and coals into turnips, beets, and potatoes, carving scary faces into them to imitate Stingy Jack's terrifying, terrifying face or to frighten him away. The tradition of using pumpkins in Jack o' Lanterns began in the United States, where all these usages were brought by the Irish immigrants. Obviously, we know that it is all nonsense, since a soul after, after the death of the person goes all to, he to heaven, to hell, or to pur purgatory, and souls are not roaming around anywhere on this world. Sometimes people played superstitious games on Halloween night to predict, for example, whom they would marry. A girl might look into a mirror while holding a candle to see the face, the face of a future husband. Even the classic Halloween party game of bobbing for apples began as a, began as a form of fortune-telling. In this game, Players attempt to remove an apple from a container of water using only their mouth. The first person to get an apple out of the pot was supposed to be the first to marry thereafter. Today, fortune telling has dropped out of many Halloween games, but people might meet a fortune teller at a Halloween party. Certainly, here we are not saying that innocent children who like to get dressed up and to go around the houses to collect candies would do something intrinsically evil. Within various Catholic communities in the last years has also originated the laudable costume of dressing up children on this day like saints, since we are on the eve of the solemnity of all saints. 
As Catholics, we do not have any need to be afraid of evil spirits, and much less should we have recourse to superstitious practices in order to defend us from them. The saints who already in their earthly lives have triumphed over the spirits of darkness will, if we invoke them confidently, bring also us to victory over them. A survey made in the USA some years ago found that consumers plan to spend for Halloween one to $2.1 billion of candy alone. Shoppers also plan to spend about $28 per household on costumes. The average amount spent by people celebrating this holiday was more than $74. What great good could be done if these sums, instead for, for this nonsense, would be spent for the poor and, and needy or to sustain the Catholic missionaries who proclaim the gospel and stray, strive to save souls. We want to entrust ourselves to the Queen of all saints and to the same themselves whom we want to imitate and to invoke for the help. The upcoming night is also an excellent occasion to offer prayers and sacrifices in reparation for the sins committed. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.